Hey there Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is your astrological nutshell horoscope for September 2021. The reason I'm calling it a nutshell horoscope is because we're only going to be covering the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, New Moon, and Full Moon, which I guess isn't much of a nutshell. Um, and I do actually make a lot of special videos for big outer planetary moves and transits. And so, you know, subscribe when you want to be notified about when those show up. Don't forget to check out your monthly tarot forecast that is already up and you can find that on a playlist of its own on my main channel page. And if you ever want to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website, it's integrativemysticism.com. So at the start of the month, we've got the sun in Virgo for the first three weeks. And this is in your fifth house of love, romance, partnerships, parenthood, creativity, as well as anything to do with your own creative instincts and inspiration. With the sun in Virgo, there is a huge focus on getting your love life, getting your personal life, and even your relationships with your kids in a way that is much more deeply and personally gratifying to you and, of course, to all involved. The sun in Virgo is about healing these areas of your life, especially if there has been some kind of deficit, something that's been missing, something that's gone unaddressed, or something that has just felt like it needs that extra boost of healing. You're going to find also with the sun in Virgo, because it's an amplifier, it's amplifying your odds of being able to draw in a new experience or a new story in your love life, whether you're in an established partnership or not. This is great for attracting new partners into your romantic life as well, especially if you are looking to maybe get the attention of somebody that is going to be a compatible match on a uniquely soul level as opposed to maybe a surface or ego level. The sun in Virgo is also working on bringing in opportunities to have closer relationships with your children and bring in a lot more opportunities to showcase your creative skills and abilities. After that, the sun moves into Libra after the 22nd, and that is your sixth house of work, reputation, and your schedule, the teams you are on, and your lifestyle, and your health even, and the working over healing emphasis that comes from this influence is going to be drawing in the most compatible teammates, the most compatible entourage, and the best projects for you that will help you to build up your good name in your community, in your professional community. This is also going to be a time where you are going to notice that not only are you getting the, the roles and the projects put on the table for you to maybe change the service you want to provide for the world, but the rewards that are coming through can immediately be invested back in yourself and create some major health and lifestyle shifts that will be with us all the way through October. On the Mercury side of things, uh, just to kind of segue to the next big celestial body influence, we've got Mercury in this part of your chart for the entirety of the month. Mercury is in your sixth house from start to finish. He does go retrograde on the 27th, and we'll cover a little bit of that here. With Mercury in the sixth house, this is a time of speeding up developments where things need to happen. Remember, Mercury is an accelerant. So when we are seeing Mercury in the sixth house, if there are maybe projects, initiatives, uh, maybe job changes that you are trying to make that have been a bit sluggish, or maybe you have been a bit sluggish and actually getting something off the ground, you are getting pushed into fifth gear throughout the course of this month. And you're going to notice that the feedback, the responses, and the ripple effects are going to be a lot more instantaneous. Mercury in the sixth house is also a great time to be speeding up any kind of shift you are trying to make in your physical health. If there is something that you are trying to get back under control, maybe there is something you're trying to change about your appearance, or you are trying to shift about something that you've been maybe struggling to deal with with your physical health. When Mercury turns retrograde, Mercury retrograde in the sixth house uh, from the 27th on is a fantastic time to lose weight. It really is because we are getting a chance to reduce something that we are trying to maybe bring down in numbers, whether it's reduced blood pressure, reduce weight, reduce blood sugar, anything that you are trying to bring down to a level that you would prefer. 
Mercury direct, however, the vast majority of the month is focusing on getting you out there and speeding up changes that need to happen in your lifestyle for you to be able to actually have a quality of life that may even still be somewhat foreign to you because you're going to be not necessarily living it up in sort of a plastic shallow way, but getting a chance to have your, live, your love life, your work life, your home life, your family life, again, your lifestyle on your terms in a very healthy way. But with Mercury retrograde, especially as we go into October, you may be finding that your way, what works for you, is something you have to get back in touch with because you are also unlearning a lot of maybe teachings or strategies or understandings that you've had throughout the course of this last few years and getting back in alignment with what is going to set you up for success. We have Venus in this area of your chart as well from the 1st through the 10th of the month and Venus in the 6th house, you are attracting a lot more interest in yourself and what you have to put out there into the world. This is a great time to market yourself, maybe update your website, your LinkedIn, your resume, or anything that you're trying to change about your image in order to maybe climb up or to become more seen as a valuable candidate. When I say seen, I know that can sound a bit superficial, but with Venus in Libra, you are becoming a lot more popular professionally, socially, and creatively. And so if you have been finding that maybe it's hard for you to be to get noticed where you want to get noticed, you've been flying under the radar for far too long, or you may find that uh, maybe the, the sensibilities, the fads, the trends uh, have been kind of working against you because sometimes that can happen. This is going to be a month where, especially in the first 10 days, you will be able to set things right for yourself. Venus in the sixth house is also a great time to market something that you are trying to get support for, whether it's support from coworkers, teammates, your community, or maybe even funding support, because you're going to be finding that a lot of people that are able to give the support, that are willing to put their money for their, where their mouth is, and understand that, you know, you need that value and they're going to give you that value and they're not going to just kind of you know take what they want and then just walk away this is a good month to really set a new precedent in all of your professional and creative workings because this is the time where a lot of that help is coming in after that we've got venus going into scorpio where she's going to be for the rest of the month and venus in scorpio that seventh house of partnerships, closest one-on-one -on -one connections, yes, marriage, but also business partnerships, alliances, your BFF, roommate, all these people you have your closest one-on-one -on -one connections with. Venus in this area of your chart is bringing everybody closer together. And these relationships are becoming a lot more affectionate, a lot more personal, and a lot more involved, especially when it comes to uh, Venus making sure that people are given an opportunity to wear their heart on their sleeve. And you may be noticing that partners are becoming a lot more forthright and vulnerable and showing a lot more of their, you know, I guess, yeah, let's just say vulnerable side. You're also noticing this coming from friends, close friendships. This is a great time to be focusing on especially your closest one-on-one -on -one connections because these are getting a chance to evolve into a much more intimate and much more trusting and invested way of being, regardless of the capacity, romantic or professional or just simply good friends. This is all about looking at what is going to create the truest bond, the truest, healthiest relationship for all concerned. And Venus here is also attracting people that are good for that to those of you that are looking for that you would like to attract that in a romantic partner attract that in a business partner attract that in closer friendships or just get closer to friends you already have from the 10th onward you've definitely got that working for you for the mars energy of the month you have mars in virgo through the 14th and then he moves on into libra for the rest of the month so mars in virgo in that fifth house of love, romance, parenthood, pleasure, creativity, and inspiration. 
Mars is really doing a number on this area of your chart in order to help you understand what your needs really are and where can you start to have needs get met by owning your needs, inclinations, what you're attracted to, what you want for yourself, what you want for your partner, what you want for your family, what you want for your kids. And Mars is knocking down all of the walls and all of the uh, containers that may have kept that opportunity or those uh, the assets or the opportunities that would uh, meet those needs out of your life. This is also a time, however, with Mars, because Mars is about knocking down walls and overcoming obstacles. You may notice that, you know, um, oh, this is, however, a time with Mars in Virgo that there could be some tense conversations that come up in new and existing partnerships as well as with children because we are making up for lost time when it comes to establishing trust without walls and getting rid of any of those difficult subjects or the stuff we have to tiptoe around or anything that is too hard to confront. Mars really puts it in our face so that we can face it. And so really focus on the positive here. This is about creating the strongest bonds possible. And don't shy away or try to um, hate on the opportunity for that just because of what it might take. When Mars moves on into Libra after the 14th, where he's going to be for the rest of the month, he goes into that sixth house of work, reputation, schedule, lifestyle, and physical health. This is going to be a time where your work life, your, uh, your professional pursuits are probably going to become a lot more competitive. And this could be very, very good because Mars in a work area always brings a lot of money and a lot of opportunity to grind out a lot of coin really, really fast. But if things become cutthroat, things become ruthless, it can create problems in the short and long term. So be careful about situations where you're tempted to go too hard or you may be attaching to people that are going too hard, whether they're sinking too much money in, taking an overly aggressive approach or becoming a pariah <laughs> in their own social or professional communities. Mars is giving you, however, the chance to solve a lot of problems that may be going on uh, systemically in either your social life or your professional life, but you want to make sure you are handling this with grace. Mars in the sixth house is also a great time for those of you who are looking to maybe make some shifts into more competitive jobs, more competitive working conditions, especially if that is where you know personally you thrive. Just make sure that you are handling this in a way where you keep your dignity and you keep your kindness. Our new moon of the month is in Virgo, in that fifth house of love, romance, partnerships, your relationships with your kids, and of course, pleasure, creativity, and all of that good stuff. And with a new moon in the, in the fifth house, this is covering the sixth of the month, through the 20th. This is the time where you should be focusing on getting a new chapter in this area of your life started. Are you trying to attract in a new romantic partner? Are you maybe thinking about starting to extend on your family, right, and have a child? This is also a great time to maybe launch, monetize, or, uh, you know, market a an artistic passion of yours, or maybe even reinvest in something that is just deeply personal. It doesn't have to be a moneymaker, just something that actually is a source of inspiration, a source of creativity for you. Because with the new moon in Virgo, remember, new moons are all about planting seeds. This is the part where we are all responsible for doing our due diligence. What do we want to put out there that will actually grow into something more? We have all of this attractive energy going on this month, let that new moon help you start a new chapter in your love life or a new chapter for your family. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the full moon energy of this month, you have this full moon in Pisces, September 20th. And this is going to be covering the window of the 20th of September through the 4th of October. This is happening in your 11th house of friendships and social networking. Anything to do with your social support system, your platonic support system, the guys, the girls, that kind of thing. And with a full moon in Pisces, it could 
mark a very interesting uh, release where you may be finding that it's time to take your leave of a certain friendship or possibly a friendship group, a friendship community, a creed, an ideology, or something that you have carried on or connected to. But now you are finding that maybe because of all of this other good stuff that's going on that we've talked about this month, that it was never going to get you there or it was actually keeping you out of a place that you wanted to be. And you may also be cutting some ties when it comes to certain friendships that have shown themselves to be unhealthy or maybe dysfunctional, unbalanced, or anything that could actually be introducing unhealthy or unbalanced behavior into spaces of your life you want to keep pristine, that you want to keep on the up and up, that you want to keep balanced and healthy and high vibe and all of that good stuff. And so there could be some clipping going on in your social life at the end of the month as well. So that is what I've got for you. Taurus, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. Check out your monthly tarot forecast. That is already up on my main channel page. And of course, if you ever want to get a session with me, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.